that will be there or uh, you know it will go no your your picture will be seen but the who is seen no they won't be seen on the panel you can see them but on the uh, panel they won't be seen i can disable it or let it be there uh, you can disable it you can keep the speaker view there is a speaker view up on the left there is a gallery view and the speaker view when you tap on it it will show on the speaker uh where is that uh on the right side upper column just above the video speaker video yeah just that that one yeah does that keep that one so that shows on the show share when you speak it will show you okay yeah okay now okay. shall we begin yeah we'll start in yes sir yeah. so okay. uh I'm glad to welcome Professor John Ebnezer for this uh, first uh, postgraduate education webinar series, and I'm very thankful to Sir for uh, taking this uh, talk. And I uh, mean, we are all eager to hear you, Sir. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the postgraduate education. Is one pearls and pitfalls in each exams has been chosen as our talk. Now, before I begin the my dear students, and I would like to introduce you to you know myself to you all. You know me, but um, you know, let me give you a brief introduction so that you will know all about me. I belong to a teacher, author among MBAs and PG students, author of both children's books in all degrees, books for all genders, and multiple international editions. Two Guinness World Records, book writing, researcher, PhD, and then 16 international publications. My research figures in the 2013 non orthoplastic international treatment guidelines by the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. I have over 250 presentations all over the world um, in various conferences, and then I've gone for community services for my own trust. And and OP clubs. So far, I have six grades for records, two for academics, uh, three for social studies, and one for awareness. And some various professional bodies, former vice president of the Union Association, president of the Bureau Spinal Surgeons Association of India, former the Geriatric Orthopedic Society of India, New York Medal of Equipment in uh, Orthopedics, setting the trend, holistic orthopedics, a uh, pioneer, uh, uh, new treatment method, and also started a new service. So we are losing your voice. Two and sixteen, and then about Uh We can wait for some time till we connect back to uh, Professor Ebnezer. Yes, sir. Uh, we can lost you. you uh, we lost you for some time. I think the net connection okay. was uh, a bit slow. So okay. you can share your presentation again. Yeah, now it's on. Yeah, now it's on. But I'm not able to see myself here. Uh, once you share the presentation, you will be. So I will share it again now. 
now. Yeah. So I can minimize this. Yeah, it's already open. You can click on the share button and it will come up. But your internet connection looks to be slow. Okay. The green button will work. I'm not able to see that. Launch meeting, yeah. It's again says, you know, download at all. No, no. Uh, can, can you see my video? Yeah, I can see you. Yeah, just below that there is a share button. Green color. Below you. Yeah. No, I, I can't see. Okay. Now? No, I can see you, but I don't see any green button here. Okay. Yes. Now can you? The same share button. Please uh, sign in, join a meeting. Okay, you can join a meeting. You are already in. Uh, so what is the no. The net connection is really slow. Okay. Can you see me? Yeah, we can see you. Your internet connection is unstable, it says. Yeah. Something like that. No, it's fine. Should I sign in again? Uh, you can use the same link. Okay. And should I again do it in a launch meeting? Yeah, you can. You're already huh? here. Can you see my video? I yeah, I can see you. Okay. I can see you. Just expand the but thing. Uh, wherever you're seeing my video, yeah, just double click on it. Now I can see the share button. Okay. So host disabled participant screen sharing. Okay, I'll make you the host and then it will yeah. work. Yeah, now it will be available. Okay, now again I have to click on share. Yeah. Okay. Who's then the I have to click on the PPT? Yeah, yes sir. Share. Can you call me later? I clicked on the PPT, then share. Yes. Okay. okay. Now it is on. Yeah. Yeah, now it is now on. You share? No, that's fine. Not required. not required. You can go with the just... slideshow. Okay, fine. Well, so uh, um, I think this uh, couple of slides you might have you know, seen already. Uh, we have seen so, till uh, five yeah. slides. Five slides. Okay. Yes. Then from here I'll commence. Okay. Yes, sir. Presentations. All yes, sir. Presentations. Community services to my own trust. Six minutes for the cards. Two schools, academics. Three social and health awareness. One. Heads of uh, professional bodies. Former vice president of the IOA. And president of the newest finance service of Sushi of India. Founded the Chirani Cooperative Society of India. Um, setting a new trend, new method of treatment in all the resources, the community exists. So, pioneer that new treatment and also started a new subspecialty, which you had to call the case. Two lifetime achievement awards, 2014 and 16. First India Law of Research, it took me the guest speaker. Over 240 international, national, and state awards so far. Work machine, first of all, researcher from Karnataka, only the 15th of India since 1954. 
two national awards, one for BCY National Award and Silver Jubilee Research Award of NCI. And then the international motivation speaker, target audience, being my students, being men. So this is a brief introduction about me. Now I thank Dr. Ashok Sham for involving me in this EG Championship, my all-time favorite passion for EG. We have lined up nine episodes for you all, and today is the first episode, the pearls and big balls in EG exams. I think all that this is the most appropriate topic to start off the EG episodes. Um, because you know, when we face the exams, uh, what are the pearls and what are the big balls we should follow is you know, what is the idea behind The exams are undoubtedly the biggest event in any PG student life. Everyone wants to successfully scale this difficult summit. Many falter and few succeed. Our goal is to help the not so gifted ones to successfully scale this summit. Success in examination is not just a flash in the pan. It is the result of a sustained, concentrated, and dedicated approach. PG exams is first of the many exams you are going to face in your life. So, here we go. Everyone likes to scale the summits of life. Everybody wants to do the data. But only a few become nine movies and the past. But majority languish in the world. Every student wants to do well in the examinations, but only few do well, and others don't. Why is the question? What is that makes the difference? Is it the luck, good fortune, or the influence? Why so many of our graduates fail in the university in the examination? Is it part of the system or students' fault? What do why do students get the advent of an examination? Is it that of confidence? Lack of preparation, lack of knowledge, or lack of training. Can examinations be approached in a care free manner? Can examinations be fun? Can examinations be seen as means to an end and not an end itself? The answer is a big yes. Yes, indeed, exams can be fun if you know how to approach it. Here are some very successful people. What sets them apart? Why others cannot match their success stories? In what way they are different? Are they gods? They are very much human like us. And why the difference? Why we have very few champions? Do they do different things? What are the success model of champions? It's the passion for their profession, preparation, practice, perseverance, and then performance. This is from the Arindan of this book, Discover the Diamond in You. This is the success model of champions. Let us take an example of each such champions. Say such for example. Was it success due to luck? Was it fortunate? Was it connected to the right people? Is it not human like us? How had it lasted so long? How had it defined age? Their success, is it a group or is it due to intense preparation, strict discipline, sustained practice? Strict fitness levels, learning new skills, working on the next, discussing all with their peers, humility at all times. Everyone has heard it many times. Champions do not do different things, but do things differently. If it is saying that, if you can practice and implement all the strategies and practices of a champion, you are also going to produce the same results. So welcome to the world of practical examination. Mega event. Here in examination, examiners and evaluators are being visible people. In practical exams, you come face to face with seasoned examiners of various backgrounds. Here you are visible to the examiner and you will have to face them directly. It will be a bumpy ride for you. They have to face a barrage of questions, criticism, and seldom breaks. You could be intimidated. Abused, bad, grim, and whatnot before you come out of the event. The outcome, pass or fail, largely hinges on how you perform on the given day. I think you might be knowing about P.T. Usha, who lost by one thousandth of a second at Olympics. And you also might be knowing the story of Javed Miyata, who hit a last for six, bringing victory to his team. So the same thing with us. 
what we do all the given day could either be success or failure to us. So, video performance would be a smooth takeoff, landing, or but it's going to crash. If you do not want to crash in the practical examination, remember the four P's. What are they? Planning, ridiculous, it has to be. Preparation has to be intense, and you need to diligently practice what you prepare. And then uh, finally, you have to perform in the exams. That is what determines your success. So let us look into the first step planning. Remember this golden bullets. Exams are a part of life and not life itself. What you learn should be a lifetime of effort. So proper planning, poor performance. Without proper planning, if you set it to an examination board, you will end up as a failure. The second step is preparation. How to prepare for the uncertain and challenging practical exams? What are the qualities required for the student to secure this moment? Remember, MS Zone is success formula. This is one of the process. Result will follow automatically. You always try to focus all the result, forget the process, and that is why most of them come across. Here is a list of some important preparatory methods. Intense preparation. Prepare, prepare from day one of your student life. Balance your practical work with studies judiciously. Effort, speed, learn all the things the right way. When does the preparation for the practical exam start? Paradoxically, it is not close to the exam, but close. Starts from your OBs, walks, lecture classes, the present cases, discussions, the government journal clubs, seminars, CMEs, workshops, expert discussion, and others. How to prepare for the exams? First thing first, know your syllabus. How to learn? Start from the basics. Use your God, your faculties. Be open minded. Get the basics right always. Learn the art of critical thinking. Do not be investigation centric. Take classes on Be disciplined in your life as a student. Be regular. Be a perfect team man. And maintain your fitness, physical, and mental. Now, what do I want in this project formula? First thing first, know your syllabus. How many of you know the syllabus? Spend a lot of time understanding the requirements of your training. Make efforts to know the syllabus. Familiarize yourself with the examination patterns. Universities are different, if the exams are different, so you should know about the syllabus. Then, how to learn? Start from the basics. Example of large to who started his career as a clapper walk. Example of Vidhi Roshan started his career sweeping the floors of the studio. By their students, they are always in a hurry. They don't want to start from the base, from the scratch. They want to stay in a operate. They want to stay in a routine. So it's not going to happen that way. They want to start from the scratch and from the base. That is how you know you should begin your course. Yes, sir. Go on. Start uh, yeah. moving. How to learn? Learning just does not happen in the classrooms. God has given you two eyes. See and observe more. Two ears. Listen more. Only one mouth, so speak less. And be, you know, observe when you are in the classroom, when you are in the walks, when you are attending journal clubs, when you are in the discussions, when you are in the library, when on the internet, when in the canteens. Learn from everyone, everywhere, and every situation. Now, the next question is from whom to learn? Be an open mind, open parachute, so high in the skies. Closed mind is like a closed parachute and is a sure design for disaster. From everybody, we need to learn from a world wide, we will get to teach the best, best of the techniques. From the IRs, from the sisters, who tell you about preparation and nursing care. From the UTs, from the fellow PGs, from the senior PGs, from your teachers, from, say, from doing the seminars, from the partners, from the students. And you get the basic right. You need to be extremely thorough with the basics of technology, of clinical examination, and investigations. Know the value of clinical examination. It's a forgotten art. Spend a lot of time in the initial stages learning about the correct methods of clinical examination. This is very important. Become a clinician first before attending surgeries. 
been very many years in your examination and that's discussed with your colleagues. No, Hippocrates was a master physician who cannot be managed one way. Do not be investigation centric, lab centric, x ray centric, CT scan centric, MR centric, and ego centric. No, it should be clinical centric. They need to be able to summarize and not masters. Investigation not be taken. You should be taking the investigations. Take classes by UGs, by teaching UGs to learn what? Take classes, help them to understand the clinical examination methods. Try to answer all the doubts and queries. Get back and read if you are in doubt. This is what I did, and believe me, it gave me a handsome evidence in my GFA exams. I mean, discipline. Practice discipline diligently. Not only in your personal life, but in your you know, professional life, as two basic opinions, was to keep programs, OT, and in emergency. In health and place, you have something to be disciplined. Became regular, no substitute for hard work. Regular everyday reading, reading before and after seeing a case, reading about the approaches before and after surgery, understanding and reading about the before and after treatment, rehabilitation, procedures and protocols. Regularly during your codes and postings, you can read and supplements. Do not read for the examination sake, so read to acquire knowledge since you are going to practice it in the future. Examination should just be a part of exercise and not your goal. And be a perfect team man. Be good and interact well with your colleagues, teachers, juniors, duties, paramedical staff, patients. Should not be egoistic, selfish, proud, and push out everybody from your life. Be ready to take responsibility for your teaching programs, camps, hostels, etc. And then, finally, physical fitness. This is the last difference of our students. Send them out and be stretched doing physical exercise. What is the use if you prepare well and fall sick right at the time of exams? Recently, you might have seen Shadul Thakur. He broke down in his first test match after just 14 balls. What is the point? You know, if you break down at the, at the, you know, at the most important part of your life, then your opportunity is gone. Hence, you lots of importance to help. Keep yourself selfing by regular exercise. And don't be victims of smoking, alcohol, drugs, etc. Then, mental toughness, the yoga way. Mental toughness, very crowded situations in the practical exams. And it's build your mental strength by meditation, fire, and yoga. Then, the third step that was about the enough preparation, starting up to practice. Now, whatever you are preparing, you should know how to practice it. Attend the clinical postings regularly. See all the examination cases in the walls. Read standard books in orthopedics. Become familiar with the clinical examination. Present as many cases as possible within the clinical postings. This will make you prevent and boost your confidence. Inculcate the habit of discussions. Understand principles behind the treatment. Attend as many PG orientation programs as possible. Interact with those who have already taken the exam. Try out mock exams. Have a group of like minded friends. Once in a while, organize an exam like situation. Become an examiner yourself and experience the feeling. This will bring your confidence. It will help you to avoid the examination jitters. Make a habit of writing the case papers. Write the case papers. Write the, the you know, cases what you're going to present in your seminars or in your, in your case discussions. Learn to keep the time limit. Writing makes you perfect. Do not forget to do these. Neglecting these may prove very costly in exams. Visit Department of Orthotics and Prosthetics and familiarize yourself. Visit the Pathology Department to see the specific slides. Be perfect with common surgical techniques. Know the basics of implants and instruments. See as many x rays as possible during your course. Fourth and final step is your performance. Success as a tool is no flash in the pan. Now you have prepared well. You have planned well. Now learn the art of performing well in the exam. Preparing yourself for better exam performance. How do you do that? Well, the night before the exams, don't be under tension. Eat well. Avoid last minute reading or discussion. When in the hostel, do not pay importance to the negative experiences of other students who have taken the exams before you. They may have not many stories to tell you. 
don't get bogged down by their come this fortunes or uh, these adventures. What has happened to them? And what happened to you at all? Sleep well. Get up early in the morning. Take a refreshing bath. Say a short prayer. Reach the hall 30 minutes before. And keep these things handy. Tools required for the little examination. In a hurry, don't forget these things while you are going to the hall. They create stress for you. As we take skin markers, the hammer, on your meter, the pin, cartons, and scope, these are the ones you require in the exam. So keep it in the hand. And how are you to execute your plans for the lead day during the exam in the examination hall? Your asset is going to start now. How to overcome the challenges? Know the do's and don'ts in the examination hall. Deep breathing, start the deep breathing, take five deep breaths. This releases endorphins to feel refreshed. That was as the use this point of spread. Believe all will be well. Believe all is going to be well. Believe you will do well. Believe things will work in your favor. Believe your hard work will be. Believe in the best, but be prepared for the worst. Be mentally prepared for the worst. Be positive. Hey, things can be smooth, but be mentally prepared, things can go wrong too. Then, when cases are all what you do, patient etiquette needs to be followed. Ascertain whether your case is in your reach, your, your case correctly. Greet your patients, know the time limit, try to converse with the local language if possible, if not, seek for translators. Be courteous, be gentle, be respectful towards female patients. Do not be rude, arrogant, and insensitive. Go on our examination very systematically. Write the level and relevant points in the sheets. When you are face to face with the examiner, read your examiner. Have a smile on your face. Now your heart may be pumping fast. Look into his eyes straight. Wait for his instructions to begin. Take a deep breath. Begin slowly and confidently. Be alert to the questions posed. Think before you answer. If you are in doubt, polite your request to repeat the question. Start presenting methodically and not haphazardly. If things go wrong, try patience. You all know clarity is what we call a wall for his phenomenal patience. He wears down the borders, slowly wins the months. Lambert of Sheva, who got food perish in it after any moment, in the practical exams, you need to be private life. Wear out your examiners. Have vintage facts ready in the event of a sudden turn of event, turn of Rahul Javid. My professor Dr. N. Krishna was golden words. When you are stuck with a bad situation in the exam, let the world will pass on. He says when things go wrong, and sometimes can happen in the exam, that mentally allow the will to pass on. You cannot fight this tsunami. So many survive with just hanging out on those things that pass. Now, I'll give an example how things can go wrong in exams. My own example, in past few years, with Dr. Kata. She tried to blame me in histology. The reason was, she said, I was sitting cross like now, which I don't remember. She saw me, some corner of the hall, and I was sitting with the legs cross, and she presumed that I'm a very arrogant student, and she decided to you know, do something for me, and she failed me in histology. Harassed me in the dissection, asked me to leave the hall, asked me to stop dissecting. My case was for Peter Posa, and I was dissenting it. She asked to stop. Then, when I answered everything about Peter Posa, she asked, started asking me about literacy. I am an anatomy student, I am not a medical student, but she started asking me on literacy because she asked which nerve was there. She said, No, I didn't know. The lab will go. Every twice saw the leg of the blood. Then she thought, Would not be. Then she said, Come on, tell me about literacy. What is literacy? And all and all. She started asking. Fortunately, I knew about leprosy as I visited a leprosy hospital in Ubi where I did my MBS and had a written an essay which impressed me by impressed me that work, the first work I did an essay which was sent to Switzerland and it was appreciated as a director of the hospital. That experience came handy to me in the first MBS exam and I could answer all questions on leprosy, the types of leprosy. The organizing which causes leprosy, the symptoms of leprosy, the treatment, the nerves which are involved, the auricular nerve, the nerve, and the facial nerve, and then the lateral, all the nerves are told, and then I wrote on the online exam, and then I gave it to the examiner, seeing my life in the rescue. 
saved me from the harassment and I lost the third rank to the industry by a mere eight months. So this is what can happen. Things can go wrong sometimes without your knowledge and then you should know. Keep your cool about of it. Then use this ABC philosophy. What is this ABC philosophy? We are getting you an alert. Be bold and not rash and use common sense. And avoid this ABC. Don't argue, don't beg and don't cry. Arguing is the biggest gender what you can do in the exam hall. It's a sure shot for paper. No examiner likes a student who argues. He is the boss. And know that boss is always right. Do not argue even though you feel that the exam is wrong. Mildly but firmly. Express your opinion. Arguing will certainly prove you. And do not try and try to gain examiner sympathy. This is a tactic mostly used by girls. They work for them and they go against you. Reassure yourself that you can do it. Snatch the results with both your hands rather than spread your hands. Meaning, what is the purpose? And do not depend on do things correctly and minimize the errors. Always put up a brain front, look straight into the exam side. Remember, fortune always favors the way. And learn to manage your tension. Keep cool. Use plenty of common sense. And be opportunistic. Remember, hard work will pay. Certain amount of tension is unavoidable, but do not be worth the fight. Do not outsmart your examiners. Remember, the examiners make students once and they need know all the trials, tribulations, and mischiefs. So do not bluff and try to outsmart them. In cases of ambiguity, do not give a very accurate diagnosis, even though you are very sure. This will create suspicion in their mind. Hence, always give a differential diagnosis. Usually, in short cases, in scholars, diagnosis is not a problem. It's a clear cut case. But discussion is going to be a problem. So focus more on your discussion. So do not try the shortcut methods. Remember, shortcut is often a long cut. So scan the script for clinical examination methods, but keen to look into the case papers, keen to look into the x rays, look out for prompts, seeking the help of the internals, begging the examiners, asking diagnosis from internal experts, crying and acting in front of the examiners, concentrating on, on surgical techniques. Involving in manipulations, asking the patient, bribing the patient, and assure the simple patient. What students normally do? They do not see the patient properly. Do not talk to the patient properly. Do not elicit proper history. They are keen to arrive at the diagnosis very quickly. Eager to look for clues. Ask for help from anyone in the examination hall. Panic, hurry, and then the problem. So, make your own diagnosis first. Do not need to prompt by examination experts. Be cautious with the patients. Cut up with repeated examination by many students and you, they may be seen. So, do not look into the case paper as things may be erroneous in it. Follow a methodical and analytical approach. Do not stop after making a diagnosis. Look beyond for complications and other changes. Always make a common diagnosis. And not a diagnosis. Be on your guard if you are the first or the last student. A fresh examiner and a tired examiner both are dangerous. If things are going tough, keep your cool, have presence of mind, and look for clues. Never panic even in an extremely difficult situation. By making smart, intelligent moves, always lead the examiners into areas of your strength and do not get led into areas of your weakness. And practice gentleness with your patients and staff. Never be harsh with them. Be gentle, smiling, be kind, and the time be humble. If you develop the same qualities, that will be quite a handful, not only in the examination, in your life too. Integrity makes you handsome. Unparalleled integrity is a powerful weapon. When everything fails, your integrity will see you through. Embrace this five steps to secret. When honesty, sincerity, fairness, hard work, and kindness, this will make you invincible in your exams. And like do not be so curious means cheating, lying, copying, insincerity, falsehood, bullying, indecency, unkindness. And that's for a winning presentation. Code, relevant point of recent journals. This will create an impression in the examiner mind. Whatever statement you make, define your objectives. Analyze your exam as well. To see what really is trying to, you know, how is the examiner, and what is he trying to you know, get out of you. So you have to you know, study him carefully, construct your presentation well. Follow all the words which I mentioned so far. There are some personal tips and tricks to work on your situations. When you are in a troublesome situation, you have two options. Either you fight or you lie. 
I can report personal experiences of mine in practical exams, both as a UK, which I would like to share with you. It may give an idea. It's experience of fresh examiner, a tired examiner, an unreasonable examiner, which I've already shared with you, Dr. Nata, and my DMB examination experience. Yeah. Uh, in the uh, EG uh, exam, I was given a case of unreduced advocacy in this location, which I had not seen during my posting. So I had no idea about unreduced advocacy. But I have seen a case of mal united sofa nodular fracture. So it did appear like a mal united sofa nodular fracture. So I made a diagnosis by default that it is an unreduced tempo dislocation and presented the diagnosis in front of my examiner who was also artificial. Then why telling the diagnosis? I thought it is right elbow, but it was left elbow. Then it was changed. He said it is right elbow, it was not left. Then suddenly I was taken aback. I knew about this example because previously he had paid one of my students for a silly reason. Then I thought, now if I is saying it is left, maybe he may figure me and he may fail me. Then I have to take a chance now. Should I go with my diagnosis as right or change it to left? I paused for a minute. Then I thought, let me go by my instinct. I said, no, sir, it's right and walk will be. You are shocked. Then I said, no, no, I have selected the case myself today morning. Was left. But look at the confidence of this boy. The way he is telling it is right. I think he did it right. So he said, okay, fine. And I said, go ahead. And I went ahead. I came out of the exam hall. I breathed the sigh of relief. Kept giving me very good marks. Some 45 out of 60. And then I done well. Then he came to know that I had blood. Only when the next student, my friend, Dr. Ganesh Rao, who is a radiologist right now in Bangalore, he was the next student again. And he told him, he came to know that I had, you know, Told uh, something which was right in his mind, but I, I made him believe I was right. So, uh, this is an experience which I would like to share. Then, when you have a last candidate in the exams, when the exams, exams are higher, so that can also bring you a lot of problems. So, here is an example of my own, in my KBS injury. I was the last candidate of the day. When I went in, they were all very tired and they just wanted to drive me out of the hall. So, they posed a very silly question to me. They asked, if the health of a person is not good, what happens to the country? Was the question that was paid, you know, posed to me. Earlier, they had asked all medical questions, but for me, they asked some general questions that were just they wanted to time pass and send me out. Now I thought they were trying to eliminate me. I took a deep breath and began. I said, sir, I'll answer your question with an example. Okay? They said, they agree. I, I told the story of a color blind each in driver. They said, this driver is colorblind, he is not able to pick out the green, the red, and the orange, and he creates an accident. So they asked, so what? What did he do? How did you answer our question? I said, now you see, sir, there is a train accident. How many lives are lost? See the amount of uh, material damage that has happened, and uh, you know, all that has to be now put back, and so much of compensation has to be paid, insurance has to be paid, so much of loss to the country. So all this happened. The health of the person was not good. So, if one person's health can cause so much of damage, then you said you are talking of the country. What, what happens? You can imagine the loss would be you know, unimaginable, and you know it would be you know it, it, it would be catastrophic. And you are all stunned by my way of interpretation. And I I I, I had the first try in the KBC interview with this kind of a yeah, I love her an interview. Then, how you should lead your examiner into your areas of strength? You carry the, the elephant to the keta. Now you drop the elephant the way you want to drop. So you don't get into their strength. If you can get into the strength, the chances that you will back. So how? For example, you did this. It was second case. When I went to the exam, asked me, how does the patient with tuberculosis present? He was, you know, he meant he was further tuberculosis. So he wanted me to tell how. But I was not very, very strong in multiple uses because I was already a first year diploma student in all things. So, what I did was, I answered him, it depends on what tuberculosis the patients have. And he said, What do you mean? Sir, it would be skeletal tuberculosis. I stressed on skeletal tuberculosis. So, it depends. Then he was irritated. He said, This boy is trying to ask for me. So, let me ask him about skeletal disease. He thought I am just an MBA student, so he was irritated. 
He thought I was on goal was going to be. He asked every of us to do it. And I said, I can't defend myself whether it's fine or hate or other things. Then he was now seeing the bank. He told me everything I was fine for the process. That was what I bought. I was poor in one particular process. But he was fine for the process. I was first to get the diploma student and work on a paper with Dr. Bibi Pupi. So I knew I was fine for the process and said all my process on fine for the process and was placed for. So this is the exam. So what I can do. Then there are some discipline patients in the exam. They can be your water group, beware of them. So you have a friend of Nagesh, a rice right group who paid it but passed out later because of mercy of the exam. He was given a short case of this drop. And then a uh, patient said, it is due to an injection for fever by a doctor. And that's how he presented it. Is the exam that disagreed with them? And after the patient, the, the mechanism of the mechanism of this is strong. The patient changed worship, worship. He told, sir, I was traveling in a bus. 43 degrees, the first term of light breaks suddenly, and I jerk forward, and then I got a strong. The examiner promptly paid by friend manage. But later in the evening, all the experts assembled, they said he's a max friend, they know his examiner's school, he said, patients said, he can receive the thing, sir, please don't pay, and then he's passing, so uh, he ultimately just scraped through the exam. What is the moral of the school? Never believe the patient completely. They can misguide you. Keep all your options always open. Be polite and courteous. Repeated examiners could have examination could have left them cold and numb, and they would like to take it out on you. And maybe your bad luck on that day may be you. So beware. So my experience during the exams, my brush with the legend of the movie. She might close the set 15 minutes for examination, writing, presentation, every now is 45 minutes. Then we took exams for just 15 minutes, and I took here successfully. But what happened to my friend next to me left me down the mountain. It was a case with two closest smile and paraphrases, which she missed and paid. Moral of the story here is there is no substitute for the only clinical examination. That a very sound year the examination, that too, when you get examined or to three, pay attention to all the minor details to avoid errors during exams. Be confident, never overconfident about finding six exams. And Believe your eyes and believe your instincts. In the short case, the real exam, I was given a case of Mahavinata police fracture, but I saw a scar. And I said, why this scar is there on this Mahavinata police fracture? I inquired the patient, why this scar? And he said, some biopsy scar, he called the biopsy scar. Then he alerted me. Then I thought, maybe it's a case of giant cell tumor with Mahavinata Malini. And then I told that. And then the examiner showed me the X-ray, and indeed it was a case of TCG. Because I took a cue from the scar, I put I both it right. Moral of the story here is if the state forward case is going to not be satisfied with obvious diagnosis, look beyond and think. You may find something extra. Be on guard always, make proper history and do proper examination. And most importantly, use your God for faculties, faculties to better effect. And then I was taken by a war round. They were testing the war on knowledge, common sense, working knowledge in the war. They showed me external fixatures, asked me about the external fixatures, why it was used from those times, external factors, the fixatures were related to me. And then they asked me a full question on an empty bed. They showed me the empty bed, they asked me to comment on the bed. They said, What can I comment on the bed? So they asked me, Is this right for orthopedic patients? What is the right kind of bed for orthopedic patients? What is the defect you have seen in this bed? So on and so forth. That was a big defense question. So do not neglect the reward work as a student. Based is sincere in the student days. Doing war work is never a waste. The experiences could come handy in exams, particularly the national exams. And I was asked about pioneers. I was asked about Yisra. I was asked about Dr. Bibi Joshi, Dr. B.K. Seki. So, moral is do not forget the sweat and toil of the countless number of ultimate pioneers. Remember them, build upon their work and build upon their works and make the world a better place to live in. If they ask you about the pioneers, if they ask you about H.O. Thomas, you should be able to answer. You should not draw a blank. You know, you may cut the soil. Because main reasons why case presentations fail and this is exact. Not enough knowledge, not enough preparation, not seen a similar case before, more confidence, language, restraints. Not enough knowledge. I do. If you're not ready, if you don't know basics, you'll be handicapped. And then, not enough preparation, no schematic performance, anxiety, nervousness, and speaking disease, 
and not number, not many number of cases seen, and uh, not many cases presented in the in the, in the exams uh, in, in the in, in your training program. Most of the PG teaching products have seen PG students shy away from presenting the cases. They don't want to come forward to present cases. No, you have to present as many as possible. And that of you know, regular teaching programs are not attending any teaching programs are also being a uh, lack of preparation, not exposed to different examination. Some examiners have different different viewpoints. You know, if you expose yourself to them, you will not try to know all. And people, language districts, when your centers are in a different place, uh, and they're not in the uh, South Indian uh, you know, examination center or a South Indian I get the center in North India. I got my center in four other economics because of the gun. So I, I they, they, they could not understand Kara, they could not understand English Hindi. So they gave me a translator that should not be a problem. They need to listen to the end of a mind. And then when you have not seen a similar case before, as that happened to me in my English exams, and it can become a serious problem for you. But you should keep thinking, you keep your thinking head on, do not panic, try to make a diagnosis by exclusion. Usually, if you are very well, you can overcome even those which you are not seeing up here. And uh, you know, I put my example. And uh, the speaking disease, which I told you, is a big problem. So you need to overcome it. So it may start right before the examination. The fear of presentation, fear of examples, and others present in all. Fears of mistakes, do not get obsessed with the greatest fear of all and try to overcome it. And anxiety, how to deal with it? See, understand, anxiety is a natural state that exists anytime we are based on the stress. Examination normally will cause some stress. So don't worry, it is not of the trick is to make your excessive energy work for you. When you learn to make stress work for you, it can be the fuel for a male more enthusiastic and dynamic presentation. The tips for reducing anxiety is organize your well, yourself well, visualize well, practice well, breathing techniques, focus of relaxing, release the tension. And keep moving around. I contact with all the examiners. And do not be aggressive. Try assertiveness. Should be confident. You can stick to your answer if you are sure of what you say. Don't argue. Unfortunately, but sometimes pull the, the line of the examiner. Anybody can, anybody can go wrong. Keep your calm. Don't try to make exam realize that he's wrong and you are right. Realize that you are on the other side of the fence now. So buy your time. So you know, don't you know go into things like that. Because that you should avoid improper doing to examination methods, panic reaction, not understood the subject well, shortcut methods, superficial reading habits, poor applied knowledge, arrogance, and indiscipline. When to take calculated risks? When you have nothing to lose but everything to gain, you should learn how to take the risk. You should not be rash. You should know when you should end up taking a calculated risk. For example, you might have seen these great cricketers like Virat Sachin. Till they reach their century, they are cautious. Once they reach their century, they start you know, becoming more aggressive. Why? Because they have already landed up with their landmark now. Uh, now they can take risk and score fast. Similarly, you should also know when to take a calculated risk. I'll give you my personal example in second year exams. It was a pathology exam, and my examiner of pathology told me that I had been exceedingly well in the exam. But he wanted to give me extra marks and he told me that. He told me that, you will now ask a question. <coughs> that is about recent advances. As a UG student, you are not used to these recent advances. And will not penalize me if I answer it wrong. But if I answer it right, then you will give me some bonus marks. I said, I'm ready, sir. Then he asked me, Am I aware, are you aware of advancing? Prepared from the scheme of the wrong word. Well, I did not know it. Now it was my, time, my chance of not taking the risk here. I had nothing to lose because, because they are told me, even if I now say the incorrect answer, it's not going to bless me. But everything you gain, because if I you know, strike it right now, I may get you know, bonus marks. So, obviously, I thought the very fact that uh, he has asked me this question. Implies that there could be such a vaccine available. Otherwise, why do he, he ask me like that? So, keeping this in my mind, I told him, Yes, sir, I know about this vaccine. I heard of it. was so happy. He said, Very good. They are a very good student. And he gave me extra marks. I got second time at the university and the highest marks in pathology during those times. So, that is when I took a calculated risk. Similarly, when you land up in a situation where you are now. 
know, I mean, you have to take a risk. Be careful. Don't take a risk. You just going to jeopardize your career. And don't put yourself in your problem by being rash. Take by if you are not sure, don't take any risk at all. If you are, you know, inclined to take a risk, only when you are safe, when you have reached the shore, then you take the risk. Otherwise, you will be safe. Examiners also could be wrong. See, they are human too. They are not infallible. They could be wrong. Other examiners will bring out in during discussion. At the end of the you know, examination session, there will be a round table discussion happening behind the closed doors. At the time, they will analyze all the performance of the student. At the time, the other examiners will bring you notice of the, this examiner that look here, you have analyzed, you have given wrong marks, or you have unnecessarily you know, harassed that particular student. He's very good student, he knows everything. So, what was bad for you can change. Bad doors. So don't you know lose your hope when somebody bags you. And they, they will not be able to support in front of you, but behind you, there will be a discussion that will happen and there will be different views presented. There will be no uniformity in thinking and topics, and then you may escape to your internal expert will come to your rescue at the time. So we can be we you know you know uh, hopeful always. So let me conclude my talk. Practical exams are a challenge. Remember the six P planning, preparation, practice, perseverance, positivity, and then finally, perform. It is not just performance alone. Overnight, you will not be able to perform like a champion. It is a sustained effort for three years. If you prepare it this way, no examiner or no situation will block your progress. Because you are a seasoned person now, you have seasoned yourself so well. That you know, and nobody can stop you. There was a very famous dialogue from a movie called Purandi and Rajkumar, the, you know, the man who was known for his dialogues. He has got Rewar students under him, so he trains them. He gives them a secret of success. He tells that it's what? Prepare yourself so well or work so hard that God is forced to go down in front of you, looking at your dedication and says, My dear, you know, faithful disciple, please tell me what destiny you want me to write on your forehead. God asks you, I am right a destiny. Like that, you prepare your so well for those three years, utilize all your chances that examination is a cake for you. You go to the exam in, in a very, very light of all, and you'll be full of confidence, rolling with enthusiasm, because hard work has never failed anyone in this world. No person has become poor by working hard. So hard working, don't try any shortcut method like the last you see in the just before the exams, rushing through the you know, syllabus and only concentrating on trying to do surgeries, not focusing on clinical examination methods, not participating in presentations, not discussing with the students, with our drivers. Never do this. So, that well, do well. This was my strategy for the DNA training in my college. My mantra in life is self help is the best help, next only to God's help. I have decided to appear for the National Board Examination. I have no teaching whatsoever for the students in Bangalore and Kipan. So I decided to help myself. And the only way I could help myself was start taking classes for students, UGs and micro juniors. I was not supposed to take classes because I was not in the teaching line. I used to take classes in the evening. And I was busy the whole day doing all the war work and the works. So I used to take in the evening at 8 o'clock in the war. My classes became extremely popular, and this is how it led me to go writing also later on in my life. I followed all the six P's which I've told you now religiously, and this strategy worked for me wonders. It worked for you too, it has worked for me, it worked for you. When I went to the DM exams in Kolkata Medical College, I predicted my own results at the end of the day. I said, I have passed my exams. Everybody was surprised. They said, How do you know that you have passed? I said, Because I have done well. 
I knew that I have done that because you have been done all science tests. So you know when you do well, you know, let the examiner decide your you will know the paper yourself what is it. And I knew that I have passed it. And they were all surprised. They asked me for a party. They said, if you're so sure, you give the party right now. I said, fine. At the end of the day, I took them uh, to some uh, local uh, you know, street chat center, the street uh, the shop in Kokama, and we just gave them some party there. On the first day of the exam, I was the first day of the exam. And the exam was on five days. Out of 40 years, students who did seven and a half pass. And I was one of them. And I followed all these business which I just told you now. I did pay to teach people next to me. I can do it, so can you. All, all the best, my dear students, for your exams and also for your life. May God bless you all. This is my book for every students. It's 22 years. Thanks for patronizing it. Book on the most best students in all things. Book on clinical examination in all things. Well, this is one book that you need to read. And there's a book by me on practical examination in all things. It's worth possessing. It's all about examination, all about practical. It's a long case. Short case, and, and then uh, the viva voice, the excellent presentation, the instruments, the implants, the specimens, all this kind of things, and various anecdotes, various experiences of mine. All this book, you know, now currently this book is out of print, it will be back soon. Once it is out, it is by this, it will be a guide for you in the practical examination. So, thank you, thank you very much. Thanks for the attention, and thanks to Dr. Ashok Sham that will have. Very useful discussions in the, in the weeks to come. The next topic on HIP examination. You all know that HIP examination is your MS. If you get a HIP examination, HIP case in your examination, that is your MS office. So HIP is a big, 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 you know, uh, uh, a big, big case. And it surprises me, even today, no one has been able to successfully crack this HIP joint. And it always leads to some surprises of other. And it can be your waterproof too, the exams. So let us join again two weeks from now on the examination. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. That was a very inspiring talk. And I Thank think you. you. Thank you, Dr. Yes, sir. And I think you covered a lot of uh, uh, lot of things that uh, are there in students' mind and their fears and their anxieties. Uh, yeah, that is because I Right, right. So, right. Anyone want to ask me a question? Uh, from SIOR, does anybody wants to ask any question? So, a very good and informative. Uh, uh, lecture by sir uh, very out of the box tips he has given us and i'm sure that we'll be able to uh, make the most of the use of his tips that he has given please introduce yourself i'm dr nile uh, and we are from uh, sanchiti institute of orthopedics and rehabilitation okay nice meeting you guys thank you sir thank you sir thank you so much Thank you. Uh, hello, sir. Thank you so much for the for the lecture. I'm Dr. Ishani from Sanjeeti Institute as well. Uh, oh, sir, I, yes, sir. So yeah, I wanted uh, I wanted to know from you, sir, how we can uh, maintain a balance between doing decently well in exams and also you know being clinically sound uh, as a clinician apart from the entire examination system. See, one thing is you have to focus on you know, getting your clinical examination hard right. Now, this is not just for the exams. When you become yes. a practitioner, when you become a consultant, when you become a you know, orthopedic, you know, you know, what to say, specialist, yes. you should be solved in a clinical examination. Otherwise, what happens, you will not be able to make a good diagnosis and you become over relevant, over relevant on investigations. Uh, CT scans and uh, x rays, and uh, you will forget the, the art of good diagnosis. And uh, you know, if you know the examination methods, then it will be, it will be a great boon to you in your life. So it is worth investing your time on. Now, the, the greatest problem what our students have is they don't give any value to the clinical examination methods. They are very keen to learn surgical techniques. 
They want to operate. They want to be in business man, in business man. All these kind of things, but they don't want to focus on clinical examination method. I emphasize that when you going to become a surgeon, you should become a good clinician. Okay, sir. Definitely. Oh, really? Thank you, sir. 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 So thank you for the lecture, sir. I'm Abhishek, Abhishek Dewan. I'm a, a first year student, Sanjay Isju. So I wanted to ask one question regarding the examination and everything. So like, like how to approach an examination fees from other institute? Like for certain tests, here some different opinions. So how, how to tackle yes. that? Yes. See now this is a very good question you have got about Abhishek, right? Yes, sir. Abhishek, this is a yes, very sir. good question. Oh. Now, whenever I am attending all these teaching, the teaching, teaching programs, each examiner has got his own opinion, and each examiner has got his own technique of doing things. And the students always get confused. Yes, and uh, they go on and on and on because there is no way a student can think of what is the mind of an examiner. Yes, okay? So, it becomes very difficult for you, and they may take the competence to also. So, according to me, and as an examiner also, and as uh, whenever I take the PG classes, what I do is, I tell the students, please stick to the most standard method of examination, like thus or some yes. standard clinical examination. You please read that and please pick up the most uh, correct method of examination of the joint, spine, elbow, whatever it is, and yes. stick to that. There may be variants, there may be different, different options, there are different, different uh, ideologies, but the basic thing is the same. So, if you are sound in your basic, you know how to examine the joint thoroughly, then even if the examiner from a different institute tries to, you know, feed you down with his whole version, you can always stick to the one which is standard. Yes. Then what happens? Then what happens? The examiner cannot go against what you are telling. And maybe there may be some ego issues here. Maybe expect that he should do follow his method. Yes, sir. He has come as an examiner to the institute and he has written a book or whatever it is. Or he might have given some presentation here to the student and he expects that you have heard it and you have also tell it to him there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you should go for it, he will get the answer. What I know is this. You can try to be. This is how it is. Please accept it. Don't argue and say no. That is wrong. That is not your legal poster. Don't say this. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thanks for like that. So my idea is there are so many innumerable examiners, so there is no way you can learn each and individual examiner's technique. Yes. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot for the answer. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Good evening, sir. My name is Dr. Nayan. I'm a first year resident. Uh, sir, I've been reading your books. Uh, my name is Nayan. Nayan Srivastav. Nayan. Okay, okay, Nayan. So I've been reading your books from minus so it's an uh, absolute honor to be finally talking to you like this um so my question is that you emphasize so, so my question is that in in your in in your lecture you emphasized about the importance of reading journals and uh, other articles so, so yes. according to you what is the correct time to start reading journals and uh, articles apart from the standard books what uh, i am reading i'm a first year resident right now okay right see actually there is no strict time limit as such you can start from day one also but you can understand the recent advances only when you know the basics right suddenly you cannot start from, you know uh, trying to know about all the recent advances which are published in journals so according to me this is my personal opinion the, the best time to start reading journals is at least a year after you are you know, post graduation there is no harm in reading journals right from the beginning but you will be an aspect <laughs> of you are with some basic knowledge and that you can get at least six months to one year after your training course starts. So, I, I always I know, tell my students that first books in clinical examination and then go to the basic textbooks 
and learn the basics about his basics about spine, basics about knee, and then learn about the diseases which affect the knee. What are the treatment methods available? Investigation methods available? Then you look into the research advances. Then probably you will not be confused. But if you start with the journals first, then there is every chance that you will not go in the basics. You may end up getting more confused. So I feel that the basic training should go first, and then. Well, there are some very brilliant students. You know, they can understand everything, whatever they read, whether they Google it or the journal it, whatever. So they are present people. I'm talking about average students, and I feel that we are here for average students because the toppers they will they will pass on their own. What our our energy is focused on those. There's a possibility at least six months to a year. Familiarize yourself with your basics, then look at the journals. But when you come to the final year, you should be reading the journals and it should be members to read this over this. And still in the examination, last question, one or two, then I ask about this and advance. They will ask you more, maybe about basics only. They will suddenly not ask to start or read the different technique or they will not start asking the laser or, uh, or the road techniques and all. What they will ask you is still the basic questions only. Only when you have that well. Or that the examiner feels that this student goes well, he may now start asking you about the research advances. So, the last year is one year which you should, I think, focus more on you know, the general Thank you, Lord. Thank, thanks a lot, sir. Okay, then. Okay. So, I think that is the last of them. And. Uh, I think we also uh, are here for more than an hour now. Yes, sir. It was very useful. And we'll continue this series of lecture in every two weeks. And uh, hopefully, hopefully a lot of, lot of students had applied for the membership today itself. And it was very difficult to ratify all of them. But for next episode, we'll have many more of them and much more interactions. Yeah, it will be available, but the interaction so will can, not be there. Uh, interaction will not be there, but they can go through the lecture. Yes, they can always go through the lecture. So, okay, thank So, we have 15 minutes presentation uh, and 10 minutes of discussion. I think that was quite good. Yes, sir. So, so it was like a one hour class. It's like a theory class. Yes, sir. Exactly. Yes, sir. Exactly. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very thank much, you. sir. Thank, thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, sir.